This video is sponsored by Squarespace. There's no sugar coating here in this channel. The M2 Mac Mini, the base model M2 Mac Mini, is not gonna be for you. So I've been using this base model M2 Mac Mini for a week or so now, and I couldn't help but think that this is the perfect desktop computer for someone who's been looking to move from Windows to Mac for a while now, but didn't want to commit thousands of dollars to Apple. With the M2 Mac Mini, I think that game has changed now. Okay, wait, there are a couple of considerations here, and I should warn you that this computer could be a little bit of a gateway product where Apple entices you to get this product with low price and their latest technology, but once you're in, it's very tricky to leave the ecosystem. There is another word of caution in this video about people who like using Windows, but I'll cover that later in the video. I'm Alex, and I do down-to-earth tech videos. With a little warning out of the way, here's why I think this is the perfect machine for people who want to own a Mac for the first time, or perhaps you've been looking to upgrade your very old machine. Not only are we getting the new generation of Apple Silicon here, which is amazing, the M2 chip, of course, we're also getting some quality of life upgrades as well, like the HDMI 2.1 and Thunderbolt 4 ports. This is great news, actually, for people who might be wanting to push high resolution displays through this machine. And there's a convenience aspect as well. If your Windows laptop is so old now that the fans don't stop spinning and you're basically using the laptop at your desk all the time anyway, maybe you don't need a laptop, right? Which is where I think something like a Mac mini could make a lot of sense. Now, of course, we get the other gateway product here, which is the M2 MacBook Air. But if you're not interested in spending a grand or more, right, for, for a laptop, and your machine is always at your desk, like I said, the Mac mini at $600 could be the best move. Using the Thunderbolt 4 ports, you can hook this to a really fast hub like this one I've got here and extend all these ports for a superb workstation setup. This one here is a Thunderbolt 4 dock from OWC and I'll leave a link down below for you. You hook this up to an external and fast SSD enclosure using an M.2 drive like this one here from Sabrent and you got two terabytes in this example for a fraction of the price that Apple charges for internal storage. And here's the kicker. Even though we only get eight gig of RAM with this base model, this is plenty to run a Windows 11 machine inside the Mac. I've been using that for a few days now and I'm amazed at how fast the Windows machine actually is running. I use this software called Parallels, which costs me about 60 bucks a year to run Windows. It doesn't necessarily cost me 60 bucks a year, but if you want to upgrade to their latest versions, which has better support, then you have to upgrade to, I think it's 54, $55. But it is getting so good now. You know, there are some limitations with the software and some of the apps that won't run in this mode, but all of my apps run on this setup without problem. But if you have some specialist Windows apps, it's best to check their compatibility before committing to this. For me, this gives you a kind of a, a gentler transition into the Mac world. You can have the Windows machine as a windowed application. Parallel has this thing as well, where the two systems kind of merge and lets you seamlessly use both OSs at the same time, which is wild. I personally don't like that, but that's just my preference. When I need to use a Windows app like Microsoft Visio, for example, I'll just launch my Windows VM and do that in there. Same if I wanna play something like Forza Horizon, I'll open Windows and do that inside the Windows machine. This gives you, as a Windows user, a very nice and gentle transition to the Mac world, right? I know it can be quite daunting, especially if you've used Windows for such a long time and you're kind of, you know, stuck in there and you're kind of apprehensive to try Mac OS, but you want to have a go. You'd be surprised, actually, how much both systems are getting so similar to each other anyway. Windows are getting so much slicker now, so if you've been running on Windows 10 or Windows 11 already, the jump to Mac OS is not as difficult as it used to be. Now, I should point out that, in my opinion, this doesn't have to be either or. You know, you don't need to be Windows or Mac. There are many cases where you might wanna have the Mac in addition to your Windows PC or laptop. To me, that's like getting best of both worlds. I can see this M2 Mac Mini being a perfect media setup, for example, or a machine that you might have in a separate space for a dedicated sort of creative work. For instance, you could keep your Windows for some admin work and productivity tasks, and use the Mac Mini in a separate setup for creative work. I'll show you more detail in a moment, but as you can already see here, I'm able to run high-end workflows on this machine. You know, it's a base model machine like Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom without issues. Actually coming up, I tested my M1 Max MacBook Pro here with 64 gig of RAM to see how this compares. Slightly silly comparison, actually very silly comparison, but it's a reference. Spoiler alert, of course the M1 Max performed better, but it's much closer than you might think. Now, if you watched my previous videos, you'll know that there are limits with this base model configuration. If you're looking for serious multitasking like video editing and graphic designing or 3D modeling, software development and things like that, you know, more advanced workflows, then the M2 Pro Mac Mini might be a better machine for you. The good news is 
I have ordered that one too and I'll be doing some videos about that for you. Actually, please do send your suggestions to me on what you'd like to see and I'd be more than happy to create something around that. After all, this is your channel as well and I'm making content that I hope is gonna be useful for you. Right, let's take a look here at how well this machine runs when we are multitasking, so lots of tabs open on the browser and having some apps open as well. I would say if you're not using Google Chrome in Windows, maybe you're just using Explorer or whatever they call it now, it's like Edge, right? Maybe look to start your Mac life in Safari if you can. I used to hate Safari and have always used Chrome myself, but it has got to a point now where it takes up so much memory that it's best to avoid. Not because it takes more memory than Safari, to be honest, you know, but having both is not necessary and I try to avoid it. As you will see in a minute, Chrome is not as much of a memory hogger as it used to be. But if your entire life, like mine, is already on Chrome, like your profile, your plugins, your passwords, I totally understand you. You know, it's a lot harder to move away. It's not impossible though. Safari also takes up a lot of memory, but unlike Chrome, I feel like I can tell much more easily if a particular website is hogging the memory because it actually shows what the website is using per processing line. This here is basically Task Manager on Mac. So if you're worried about missing Task Manager in Windows, like the Control or Delete thing, we get Activity Monitor on Mac, right? Same thing. There are much better apps out there actually that display this stuff in much more elegant ways, but if you don't want to install anything extra, Activity Monitor on the Mac gives you all the basics like CPU, disk and memory. The rule of thumb I found with this base model Mac Mini is that you can use about 20 tabs at the same time as running a few apps, more than 20 tabs and you start running into memory swapping and you know, you want to avoid that. Check that video that I made that actually pushes the Mac to its limits and you will see that beyond 20 tabs and some crazy graphic intense workloads is gonna make the Mac Mini struggle a little bit. So in reality, you could be browsing socials, doing online shopping, all at the same time running productivity stuff like Microsoft Office, Evernote, you know, listening to Spotify, watching some content on YouTube and Netflix, all of that as long as you keep within that rule of thumb of 20, 25 tabs, no more than that. One of these websites here is my own website, which I created with today's sponsor Squarespace. And as you can see here, it's only taking about 300 meg on Safari. Altogether, just running Safari, right? Just one tab open is taking 1.2 gig of RAM. Doing the same thing on Chrome, we're looking at about 920 megs. Like I said, it's not as bad as it used to be. Of course, this is just one example, right? And just like the M2 Mac mini, Squarespace is super powerful for anyone wanting to create a website. I'm able to load high quality images to my website and create my own online shop too. And the best part, I don't really have any website development experience. They made it so easy for you to figure things out by yourself and Squarespace really go the extra mile here. With these templates, most of the work is already done for you when you're building your first website. And there's so much more that you can do with Squarespace. Out of all their features, my top three are online stores, this custom templates that I mentioned, and this new feature called member areas. Doesn't matter what sort of business you have or even if it's your personal work that you're trying to showcase, they will have a template for you out of the box, so to speak, so you can customize it to your liking. Honestly, you can get started in a few minutes. With member areas now, for example, you can create different packages with perks for your customers and different subscription options. You know, it really is amazing. How'd you get started? It couldn't be easier. And just like the M2 Mac Mini, the price is no longer a barrier to entry. Just go to squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to commit, go to squarespace.com forward slash Alex Geartech to get 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain. So we have 20 tabs open in the browser. They're fairly active tabs as well. And start opening some other apps. I'm fast forwarding this bit here for the sake of keeping the video short, but I've now got 20 tabs in Safari, very active websites, like I said. These aren't just static sites. And unlike some of the tests that you may see online, I'm signed in with my own account in every single one. I'm not just opening the same site several times because that doesn't really replicate what I normally do. What you see here is what I would do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, minus the video editing. If you do wanna see what I think about video editing on the base model M2 Mac Mini, I'll leave a link to a video where I did do that. In general, I'd say that these apps here, as well as 20 tabs in the browser, is probably the limit of what most people looking to buy an M2 Mac Mini would do. Personally, when I open more than 20 tabs in any machine, I have to say, I start getting a bit anxious, you know? But I do know that some people like to go up to 50, 60 tabs or even more, and if that's you, you're probably gonna need more memory. There's no sugar coating here in this channel. The M2 Mac Mini, the base model M2 Mac Mini is not gonna be for you. And I guess you already knew that. Actually, before I continue and show you something a little bit spicier in terms of performance of this little beast, this YouTube business is super hard, especially for a channel like this one. This is not my full-time business. I'm doing this literally after work. So if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up goes a long way. Maybe even share this video with a friend too. Every little helps. After this video, feel free to have a look in the channel. And if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. What's in it for you? Well, I'm here at least once a week with a new down-to-earth tech video for you. Right, here's that spicier bit that I mentioned. Don't get too excited, it's just, just a test. 
I have Lightroom here and I'm gonna pretend that I'm a photographer. And here's the M2 Mac Mini base model next to my Mac style M1 Max MacBook Pro. To remind ourselves, this is not meant to be a comparison. Well, it is, but it's a very silly one. This machine cost me over four grand. So take this purely as a reference more than anything else. Both computers are running the latest version of macOS Ventura. Uh, the M1 Max has 64 gig of RAM. That's right, that's eight times more memory than the Mac Mini. That aside, right, straight off the bat, I noticed that there was no point in me just opening Lightroom and working on a handful of pictures because that proved nothing. The M2 Mac Mini behaves exactly the same way with no lags, right? But if we try to emulate what a photographer would do and say, have some browser tabs open at the same time, some applications as well. And to be precise, I left those 20 tabs open. I'm also leaving Teams open and Microsoft Office and things like Slack, so nothing too crazy. And as you can see here, the memory before I even start is already hovering around seven gig utilization. So not much room left, right? The importing of 100 raw images from my external drive to the local SSD was almost instant. There wasn't even much point timing that, and the same for generating the thumbnails in Lightroom. I did notice that on the Mac mini, the raw images do take a little longer to process, you know, when you're flicking through them. It's like a second, maybe even sub second, but is noticeable. Nothing that would bother me, but you don't see that on the M1 Max. In Lightroom, where you go to make changes to the images, AKA the develop module, I made changes to a few photos, you know, cropping, changing the tone and applying some masks and filters. All of that felt very smooth on the Mac mini, like no delays at all. I was actually shocked given how many images I had open. Now, a real test that someone suggested I run was to export those photos. So I selected those 100 raw images again and exported into a folder on the external SSD. On the M2 Mac mini, this took just under a minute, about 50 seconds. Doing the same operation on the M1 Max was much faster, of course, only taking 10 seconds. But I'm still super impressed though, not by the speed in exporting, but how smooth it felt when I was actually just working on the photos. Really hats off to the processor here. I really can't fault it. Apple hasn't been in my good books recently with like things like the iPhone and the iPad, but on the Macs, they do deliver, you know? Clearly this M2 Mac mini is only mini in the size because it carries a lot of processing power in the M2 chip, you know? I wanna say something, bud. You are all that I see. You got dynamite. I think That's this is a really game. exciting time for anyone looking to jump from Windows laptops or even, you know, have this in a mix set up as a creative desktop. Or maybe you're a student, right, who are looking for that first computer, $600 with your student discount. I think it's like $499, I think it's just crazy. And as you saw there, some of the stuff that I was able to do is pro level work. Just don't underestimate the power of having more memory though. If there is one upgrade that I'd consider for this machine, that is RAM. Especially if you're looking to push the M2 Mac mini beyond what I was able to show here. Honestly, I still think that eight gig and 256 gig on the SSD is really criminal to have as a starting point in 2023. But there are alternatives out there, like this one I use here, that will allow you to have a lot more storage to play with without compromising on performance. Something like this is not gonna be as convenient as having internal storage, of course, and perhaps not as fast as the local storage for certain workloads, but I've been using something like this to edit videos like the one you're watching right now off of this thing without any problems. Have a good one. And cut. I wanna say something.